Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to discuss time settlement curve from the chapter consolidation of soils. So till now we have discussed how the soil sample extracted from the field and tested in laboratory will behave under static loading. Means how its compression will take place with progress in time when it is subjected to static steady loading. But the results obtained from this test cannot be used directly in the field because there is difference between working on the field and working in laboratory. So these differences we are going to discuss in this video. In the laboratory, we apply load on the sample instantaneously but in the actual field load is not applied instantaneously it is applied gradually so let us discuss the gradual increase of this load in the field or pattern in which the load is applied on the soil with the help of graph in this graph the horizontal axis represents progress of time and vertical axis represents the load so upper side indicates the increase of load because of which compression of soil take place and the bottom side represents decrement of load because of which swelling of soil takes place now when we construct a structure in the field the first thing we do is excavation so because of this excavation load on the soil will decrease and this decrement load is represented as this curve which is at the bottom side and swelling of soil take place then after excavation we start constructing footing so because of this construction the load on the soil again start increasing and soil starts getting recompressed so here the curve between this midpoint up to t naught represents the recompression of the soil so here the full load p indicates the total weight of the structure after its completion and the corresponding time tp is the time required for the construction of that structure so from this graph we can see that the net compression of the soil has taken place between this time period only and the compression which have occurred during time 0 to t naught is negligible so when we want to study the consolidation of soil we will have to consider this time period only that is period after the recompression up to the completion of this structure suppose a soil sample is tested in laboratory is subjected to instantaneous load P and the settlement of that soil sample at time T is recorded. Suppose S1 is the settlement of that sample at time T. Now another identical soil sample is taken and it is subjected to load P but this time the load is not applied instantaneously it is applied gradually from 0 to p here the load is gradually increased from 0 to p and at time t the settlement is recorded the settlement b s2 so here though the samples are identical though the final load is same Though the time interval is same, the amount of settlements will be different 
because here the load is instantaneous and here the load is gradually increasing so here sample 1 represents laboratory condition and second sample represents field condition so if we plot a graph of settlement versus time for the lab condition then and another graph for settlement versus time for field condition then these two graphs won't be similar but if we know the relationship between these two plots we can use the laboratory plot to determine field plot field plot so we can determine the curve of time versus settlement for the field condition using the time versus settlement curve obtained during laboratory testing using following relationship the relationship is settlement at time t in the field is equal to settlement at time t by 2 in the laboratory so this is time versus settlement curve obtained during laboratory it is also called as instantaneous loading curve so if you want to find the settlement at time tp in the field we will find the settlement at time t by 2 in the laboratory curve so we will draw a vertical line at tp by 2 it will intersect the curve at point a now from point a we will draw a horizontal line this horizontal line intersects the tp at point c so this point c represent the settlement at time tp in the field so point c lies on the field curve now if we want to find the settlement at time tp by 2 in the field we will have to find the settlement at time tp by 4 in the laboratory so we will draw a vertical line at tp by 4 towards the instantaneous loading curve it will intersect at point n so this much will be the settlement at t by 4 so from point n we will draw a horizontal line it will intersect at point at this point on a line vertical at t p by 2 but here one thing we should note that the load corresponding to time t p by 2 in the field is p by 2 and the load which is corresponding to this instantaneous loading curve is p so this relationship cannot be directly applied for this case we will have to apply a correction so this correction is applied by joining this point to the origin so we have joined the point of intersection of tp to the n with the origin it will intersect the vertical line at tp by 2 at this point let this point be g so this g point lies on the field curve again if we want to find out settlement at any arbitrary time t in the field we will have to determine the settlement at time t by 2 in the laboratory so we will draw a vertical line at t by 2 towards the instantaneous loading curve or laboratory curve it will intersect at point d so this much will be settlement at time t by 2 in the laboratory 
which is equal to settlement at time t. So we will draw a horizontal line from the point D. It will intersect here to the vertical line at TP by 2 and here to the vertical line at TP. So here also the difference we should note that that load corresponding to time t is somewhere near 2p by 3 and the load which is corresponding to instantaneous loading curve is p. So because of this difference we will have to again apply correction and this correction is applied by joining this point to the origin. So we have joined these two points and it will intersect the vertical line from T at this point which is J. So this J point will lie on the field curve. So if we connect these three points that is G, J and C, we will get corrected curve or field curve. If we extend instantaneous curve and corrected curve beyond its loading period means beyond this point beyond TP then the horizontal offset between instantaneous curve and corrected curve will be TP by 2 that means beyond the loading period the horizontal offset between instantaneous loading curve and corrected curve remains constant and it is equal to TP by 2. Thank you for watching.